Hey guys, it's Dan here. In this week's video, it's gonna be a little bit controversial because I'm gonna talk about the topic why finance will save our environment. So when you hear that kind of stuff, you say, oh, that's clickbait or that sounds wrong or something like that. But you know, lately I've been watching a lot of different t TV shows about experts uh, talking about climate change and a lot of people were agreeing that the most important challenge of this century was to convert our capitalistic profit-driven society into a more sustainable um, society, well, to guarantee um, that our environment will uh, improve over time. And at the first glance I was saying, yeah, that, that's a pretty good way of saying it. But after thinking for a few days, I said, yeah, you know what, maybe let's gonna do a quick video about it. Because in my opinion, it's not finance which is bad. A lot of people point to finance and say, yeah, you know, finance, all these guys, they are, uh, it's all about profit and finance and uh, you're gonna destroy the environment be because you want these profits. Well, actually, it's a bit more complicated and I'm gonna explain you in this video why finance was the problem and will become the solution to our environmental issues. So let's get started, guys. <music> finance and we talk a bit about business it's actually the sum of a lot of companies so let's first of all try to analyze and understand what are the primary goals of a company nowadays well first of all and I think we can all agree uh, every business school teaches it it's to maximize profits and cash flows second of all if you want to learn the difference I made a, a lot of different videos uh, to, to understand what profits and cash flows are second one maximize shareholder value in other words maximize um, the stock price. So this one we can also see happens all the time and is super important for our economy as well. And the third one, well, it came up the last, let's say 20, 25 years, especially after the Nike scandal, I made an entire video about that. It's the famous uh, ESG, environmental social governance, uh, which led also to impact investing and these kind of green types of investing. Okay, now let's be realistic for a second here. The first one, profits and cash flow, is clearly a financial goal every company um, is looking at and that's super, super important. You see it in every communication, right? Super important. Uh, and for the survival of the company as well. The second one, of course, maximizing shareholder value. If the, pro if the stock is not going up, well, CEO is out of the place pretty, uh, pretty quickly. So also super important financial value. And the third one is very debatable because that um, sounds super great, but actually ESG became more and more like a marketing tool, you know? Today, of course, people are getting greener, they want to buy greener stuff and these kind of things. But um, let's face it for a, se a second, a lot of companies, I think about Starbucks, for example, if they're gonna sell, they're gonna sell you a coffee and then a bamboo cup and then you're gonna buy it and say, wow, I'm so green, I saved the environment. But let's put it like this, I mean, this is definitely not a, a financial goal for a company and that's not going to save the environment uh, either. So how, the, the big question I'm asking myself, do you have to twist these two goals of a company? Do you have to make them more sustainable? Do you have to transform them um, to achieve the, the, the end goal, which is a more sustainable society? Or can you keep these two things? and see what happens. And this is my analysis right now. If we were in a boxing ring, um, this is what happened more or less until 2015. You always had profits and stock price versus the environment and profits and stock price always destroyed this one. They always won the game, right? Of course, in the long run, you should preserve this one because otherwise this one will kill this one. <laughs> so why is it 20, why is 2015 such an important year in my opinion? For three things. Uh, first of all, consumer tastes really shifted in that year um, through more green stuff. It doesn't matter if it's uh, in the supermarket or generally uh, in the image and in how people invest, definitely. Uh, then there was a big change in regulations um, shown by the Paris Agreement, which, which was signed by 196 countries. I know the US dropped afterwards, but are probably coming back to that. And regulation is also an important point because um, politics understood, okay, there is kind of a shift in the mood of people. You know what, maybe let's try to uh, gain something out of it. 
And in my opinion, the most important from a financial perspective is that investors started to, to realize the real climate risk. So that's why, in my opinion, since 2015, it's kind of a pivotal point where things started to change and I'm explaining you why right now. Now to explain you why I believe that finance will save the environment and not uh, our politics and, and these kind of things, I would like to talk about the two out of four financial markets. If you want to know everything about financial markets, I made a video about the financial markets, but let me start with the two financial markets and you will understand why I believe that finance, which is the problem, is also the answer to this whole environmental mess. So let's get started with the stock market first. So the stock market is obviously where you can buy and sell stocks. In other words, you buy ownership, for example, if I buy one stock of Amazon, I buy a tiny part of ownership of Amazon. Um, now let's, let's imagine and let's keep in, in mind this number. All stock markets together, combined together, they have a valuation today of about 78 trillion US dollars. That's about four times the GDP of the US. To give you an idea how huge the stock markets in the world are and how much money is inside that. And also to, to give you a, an overview of the biggest investors, uh, I picked the biggest one and the biggest investor in the stock market, but generally in finance, it's BlackRock, which is a huge asset manager. You probably heard about them. And they have about $7 trillion. Uh, that's almost like half of, or like a third of the US GDP invested in financial markets in general. So why does it matter so much? And why are these numbers important? Hear me out. Um, what drives the stock price? Obviously, as an investor, let's imagine if you're a huge investor like, like BlackRock, what drives the stock price? Is it the past or is it the future? Well, a very simple answer. It's never the past. You don't care about historical data of a company. It's always future expectations. Future profits, future cash flows, future shareholder value. Is the stock going up over time? Okay. Why is that so important? Because now think about our environmental impact. It's all about the future, right? You, you, want, you, you want to have the best possible information about the risk, what is going on in 20, 30, 40 years. That's also what insurances do, for example. And of course, climate change, as we know today, is, is, is getting closer and closer. I mean, it's getting worse and worse, which means, of course, there's going to be a huge impact in the next 20, 30, 40 years. And the reason why BlackRock became so big and so popular is because they have uh, their, their software is called Aladdin and it's the best risk management tool in the world. So what does a risk management tool do? Uh, do? Well, it estimates future risks to see if it makes sense to invest in a company or not. So what are they doing? Of course, they are factoring in uh, the environmental issues and the, the, the changes and the risks. And as you can see, uh, I'm showing you the letter of Larry Fink, which is the CEO of BlackRock. Uh, this, uh, this year or last year, 2020, uh, he made an entire point why it was so important to disclose um, climate risk uh, information for all his companies were invested in, because it makes such a big difference on the future valuations here. Because, um, and, and this is also the reason, if you look at the S&P 500, the biggest 500 companies in the US, which are listed, guess which sector performed the worst in the last five years? Well, it's energy, it's oil and gas. Why? Because the risk of climate change is absolutely huge on these oil and gas companies, okay? So, of course, in 20, 30 years, Nobody knows exactly what's going on, but what is sure is we, we're probably going to need less oil and gas, which already drops the future expectations, but they are also in a very um, risky environment because you don't know exactly what's going to be the impact on, 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 the, on the climate change. But this is why investors think ahead, and especially uh, companies like BlackRock, they invest usually they, are, they invest your, your future pensions and these kind of things over 20 30 years so of course they need 
to be uh, aware of the future risk in the next 20, 30 years and they have to price it in uh, cleverly, let's put it like this. And what do I mean by that and why is it such a big deal for finance? Because of course they're going to do everything uh, to get their returns. They want their future profits, their future dividends, future cash flows and future growth of course. And that's why the good and the bad well, will, will be divided in, in, in the stock market of course. You want to invest in the, in the good stuff, in the future proof stuff and the, the bad stuff uh, will, will get out at some point, you know. At some point we will um, get rid of oil and gas, maybe not in 5 or 10 years, but at some point when you see the valuations of all these companies. 2020 was the first year, of course due to the pandemic, but it, it shows you a clear trend, where uh, clean energy companies were valued more than dirty companies such as ExxonMobil, for example. So this tells you a lot about the trend which is already going on and um, what you have to understand is that finance and the financial markets and the investors, they are reflecting the future much better with a, with a better risk approach because, well, they put their money inside. So you want to know, uh, am I going to get returns or not? For the government, it's different. It doesn't matter in which country do you live. Um, they're going to be elected for the next four, five, ten years maximum, right? So wh why do I care what's going on in 10, 20 years? Right now, maybe in politics, you will twist a few things so you elected in three, four, five years. But nobody wants to touch um, the, the jobs, you know, in, in, in oil and gas and these things. So think about the, the US elections, for example, with the fracking. Nobody wanted to touch the jobs, especially not the Trump team, because they knew it, it would be bad for their re-election. Uh, and this is why I believe, especially finance has a huge play, uh, has a huge role to play here. Especially, first of all, in the stock market, because as I just mentioned earlier, it's all about future expectation. It's about future risk, and so you need to be aware of what's going on in the future over 20, 30, 40 years, even if it's very difficult to measure. Of course, nobody knows exactly what's going on, um, but you have to do it. Because, well, <laughs> you put your 7 trillion in, in the game, so you want to make sure that uh, you get a good return, right? It doesn't matter if it's for you as a company or for your clients, because your clients will leave you if you're not doing this. This is what I mean, uh, why finance will save the environment, especially in the stock market. So now let's move to the second market, which is the bond market. And uh, I will show you what's the impact here. <music> Let's quickly talk about the second financial market which is the bond market and the effect that it's going to have on future climate change. Well, uh, what is the bond market? Well, bond market is the alternative to a bank loan for a company. As a company you can ask for money at a bank like every individual can, but you can also ask uh, on the financial market, on the bond market, uh, if you need money. And in this case as a company you issue a bond and issuing a bond means asking to borrow money. So in this case the company needs money. Uh, the investor on the other side buys bonds and in other words the investor lends money to companies. Okay? So of course uh, all this thing doesn't happen, it's the same as a bank loan, it doesn't happen for free of course. The investor wants to get a return, he wants to be paid via an interest rate, right? Like, like a bank who asks you an interest rate if you are buying a car, for example. Um, what is interesting and also what is very future driven is that these interest rates um, are driven or, or yeah, uh, depend on the company's rating. That's a bit like f for you, um, do you have a good rating at, when you go to the bank? Yes, no, and uh, this will make a difference on how much interest you pay. Well, for the companies, it's exactly the same and you have rating agencies that will rate companies. They rate ev every public company from great to junk, right? And uh, what is super important, and this is the link to sustainability and to climate change, is that this company rating, which is made by the rating agency, well, it also depends on future expectations. So the rating agency, the credit rating agency, will look at the company and see, okay, is it future proof or not? Especially for a very long bond, let's say 20 years or 10 years. Um, will they be able to generate enough profits and so on? 
uh, to pay back interests and, and the principal or not. And if it's a very bad, dirty company and you see that maybe in the 10 years climate, climate change will have a huge risk, r huge impact on this industry, well, then this company will, will maybe still be able to borrow money, but at higher rates. And this, of course, has a huge impact on how companies act in the future and how companies are seen by the market. So this is my conclusion when it comes to will finance uh, save the environment? Well, first of all, as I just explained earlier, uh, you have huge players on the financial markets, huge investors behind like BlackRock. And uh, in my opinion, the big long-term investors like BlackRock, like Vanguard, all these companies who invest massive amounts for the long run, um, will discipline companies and financial markets. As I, as I explained earlier, um, if you are in it for the long run, if you're not a hedge fund who is betting like on, on one or two years or even less, then of course you have a huge interest, not because you're a great person and you want to save the world or something, but out of pure financial necessity, you have to be aware of climate change, you have to price it in, that's what BlackRock is doing, uh, for example. Because the idea is, of course, you, do want, you don't want to deteriorate your future profits, cash flows and shareholder value because you have not priced in um, the risk. So, of course, the risk will or is already very well reflected. The thing is, we don't know exactly um, the climate change risk in the next 20, 30, 40 years, um, on, especially on investments. But the idea is that it's, it is factored in and it will discipline um, companies with greater practices, with being great, uh, greener, with uh, just being more socially responsible because it also de destroys shareholder values and is, uh, these kind of things. And that's why, in my opinion, dirty companies like the big oil companies, for example, will be punished by the stock market, uh, which means, in my opinion, at some point they're gonna be out of the index, let's say the S&P 500 with the 500 biggest companies, you are, there are a few criteria, you have to be big, you have to be profitable and so on. Um, and when you stop being profitable at some point, you can easily drop out of the index, which makes you less interesting for investors. That's what I mean by punished by, by the markets. And also on the bond market, if you want to uh, get fresh money, for example, if you want to lend, uh, borrow money, uh, you're going to pay higher interest, which will jeopardize um, additionally uh, your future here. So this is what I mean by punished by the markets. Um, and my conclusion is actually finance is not the problem, but it is a big piece of the climate change puzzle. Of course, climate change is such an important, huge topic that it's not going to be one thing that will solve uh, the, the, the entire thing. But I believe that when people today talk about uh, finance is very bad because it's just profit driven and cash flow, uh, cash flow driven and shareholder driven. Yes, for sure, it's, it, it's true. But the thing is that exactly these things will make the world go forward because these big investors have a huge impact on basically on our all day lives, if you want, and on, on, on big companies as well. So this is how, in my opinion, it's going to play out. So I would love to know if you agree with me or if I'm totally wrong. Uh, that was just my personal opinion, of course, explaining you the mechanism. Um, now I wanted to tell you that if you like that kind of content, it takes me about six, seven hours to produce each video. If you like market finance, corporate finance, make sure to sub subscribe to my channel. Make sure to like this video, comment if you want. Have a great week. See you soon, guys. Bye bye.